Good day everyone, I'm Federico Savasta. I'm going to present the paper Bandwidth Efficient Threshold in CDSA. This is a joint work with Guillaume Castagno, Dario Catalano, Fabiola Guillaume and Aida Tucker. In this work, we provide uh, new techniques to build Threshold in CDSA schemes from class groups. Before giving the line the presentation will follow, we give an overview of ECDSA. ECDSA is the acronym of Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm. It is a digital signature standard and it relies on elliptic curves. It's widely used in main applications. One of the most famous is Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, we need to sign transaction and a stolen signing key can be translated in a financial loss, which is a single point of failure that we want to avoid. The reason why distributed ECDSA is in high demand is that a distributed version of ECDSA permits us to share the signing key between more devices. And then if an adversary wants to steal the key, he has to obtain the different pieces of that signing key. The second goal of Distributed CDSA is that it gives cryptocurrency custody solutions. In our context, we will talk about T out of N threshold signature schemes, where N is the number of parties, T is a threshold which is a, an element less than N, and also it indicates that T plus 1 is the minimum number of parties that can jointly sign, but a number of T or less party can do nothing and cannot obtain anything about the signature. The ECDSA protocol works in the following way. It takes as public parameters a uh, elliptic curve G of prime order Q with a generator which is a point P. The secure key is a random element each chosen in ZQ and the public key is an elliptic curve point Q which is computed as H multiplied by P. If we want to sign a message M with ECDSA, the steps are uh, the first sampling a K in the Q, then compute an R, which is a point computed as K multiplied by P, take the first component of big R, which is little r, and then compute S as the multiplicative, multiplicative inverse of K multiplied by a Nash function called computed on M plus R at module Q. And the output finally is the couple R and S. When we want a distributed version of the ECDSA signing al algorithm, we face a problem. The problem is how to sharing the elements of ECDSA, which are the secret key it's and the element K. To, uh, to give an intuition of that problem, we can compare it with another protocol, signing protocol, which is the Schnorr algorithm for signing in elliptic curves. This algorithm uh, uses the same public parameters, which are the elliptic curve, the order Q, the generator P, secret key, and public key. The first step in, in the uh, Schnorr is to sampling uh, K in the Q, which is as in a CDSA to compute a point R, as in ECDSA, to compute an element E, which is an hash function computed on R and M, which are known to all the, the parties, and the signature is K minus E multiplied by E. If we look at Schnorr, we can see that the expression of S is linear as the K in point R, while in ECDSA we have the multiplicative inverse of K. So, if we want to think about a, a deeply shared K, we can think about K as K1 plus K2. In, in the case of two players, but it is the same for more players. And S can be written as two additive shares of type Ki minus its I multiplied by E, where its I is the additive shares of its. But the same thing is very difficult to be done in the context of ECDSA since, as I said, it's, it's really difficult to compute additive shares of k to the power of minus 1. Computing additive shares of k to the power of minus 1 is what makes ECDSA interesting in its distributed version. Now we can, we can go to the 
main points of the presentation, we will see three parts. The first, in the first part, we will introduce some previous works which uses a similar setting of ours protocol, and that works are also comparable in terms of efficiency with ours. In the second part, we will introduce our, our full trash of the ECDSA protocol, and finally, in the last section, we will see about the efficiency of that protocol compared with the previous works. So we can start introducing that previous works. There are a lot of works about distributed CDSA or in the context of threshold CDSA, and, and we took an account in particular two of them, which are the Lindelof protocol uh, from CCS 2018 and the Gennaro Golfeder uh, protocol from the same conference. The former uses an Elgamal in response and encryption scheme, and it is secure and simulation based definition, while the second uses a different encryption scheme, which is Payer, and also it is secure and uh, game based definition. The, there is a point in common of, uh, of in these two schemes. That common point is that they use linear homomorphic encryption scheme which permits two parties to jointly compute signature. This, is idea, this idea comes from the McKenzie Rater paper uh, from Crypto 2001. We follow the same line using another encryption scheme, which is also linearly homomorphic, which is the castagnola guillaume encryption scheme. And our protocol is built upon GG18 uh, protocol. As a result, our first main contribution is the introduction of new techniques that permit us to realize efficient threshold variants of the ECDSA signature scheme. And as I say, this can be seen as a new variant of the Gennaro Golfeder protocol. Our scheme also removes the range proof that come from that protocol and also it is comparable in terms of efficiency with the other solutions. Our protocol, as I, as I said, is built to Ubon GG18 uh, protocol and use the same communication model and the same type of accessory. The communication model consists in a broadcast channel where we have end players that can also communicate be between them in couples using point-to-point -point channels. The type of adversary is malicious and it is a prob probabilistic polynomial tie. And he, as a consequence, he can decide to don't follow the protocol. He corrupts T players, where T can be up to N minus one players, which means that we can have only one honest player. He can do study, he do study, does study corruption, which means that he decides what players to corrupt at the beginning of the protocol, and it is also rushing. That informally means that he speak after all the honest players. So we are assuming that we have dishonest majority and the consequence is that we don't have any guarantee about the completeness and the robustness of the scheme. We can give in brief the structure of the, the protocol, which is very similar to ours. And they take as parameters uh, the number of parties and uh, threshold T and then they start with the interactive key generation, which consists in a T out of N verifiable secret sharing of the secret value each done by all the players to all the players. And then at the end of this phase, they will have uh, the public verification key Q. After that, they start the interactive signing phase, which consists on more tanti players that want to sign a message. The first thing to do is to convert the N shares of it in T shares of it using Lagrangian coefficient. And the main idea is to compute a point R using K multiplied by a, a mask, which is gamma, and not directly sharing this, the additive shares of K. Finally, multipl uh, multiplying this with another value, which is gamma P in the protocol, they will obtain R. And finally, they can compute the signature or have an abort if some check doesn't pass. After saying that, now we can go deeply to our full threshold protocol. In the signing phase of the general federal protocol, 
Each of the party has to run a P2P protocol with the others. So we can count about n to the power of two protocols. And in each of them uh, are present range proofs. The range proofs are caused by the difference of the Payer encryption scheme model n and uh, q, which is the model of the elliptic curve. So what we want is to use uh, a homomorphic encryption scheme, which use a message space of order q, and we want that this, this q is the same of the elliptic curve. There are not many such schemes out there, but we can use the uh, castagnola guillaume encryption, encryption scheme. We will indicate the castagnola guillaume encryption scheme with CL. It has been introduced in uh, CTRSA in, in 2015, and the framework is the following. We have a group, which is a subgroup where the discrete log is easy to be computed. We can imagine a group which is cyclic of odd Q multiplied by S, where Q is a known large prime, S it is unknown, and Q and S are relative prime. G can be seen also as a direct product of two subgroups, which are F and GQ of order Q and S respectively, and also F is the subgroup where the discrete log is easy to be computed. We also use one assumption, which is one of the three assumptions that we require for the security proof of our protocol. This assumption is the R sub subgroup membership problem, which tell us informally that it is difficult to distinguish an element that comes from G from an element that comes from GQ. In CL encryption scheme, the adults give an instantiation in class groups where we have k, which is an imaginary quadratic field of discriminant delta k. Delta k is div uh, divisible by p, q, which are, which are primes. And then we can define a non-maximal order or, or delta of discriminant q to the power of 2 delta k. Uh, if we take the class groups c of o, we can exhibit a circuit group of order q, which is the group where the discrete log is easy. And about the security, we have that solving the R subset membership problem reduce the, reduces to the problem of compu uh, the computation of the cl class number and also the best known algorithm, uh, which is the index calculus method, has a L one half complexity. Uh, if we see about the normal groups for discrete logarithm or factorization, the complexity is about L one third. And also, we have in this way short elements uh, instead of the elements used in PIE. Given the framework, we can talk about our signing protocol. This is divided in three sub protocols, which are an interactive setup, an interactive key generation, and an interactive signing. In the first one, the setup, we have the ECDSA public parameters, which are the curve, the order, and the generator, and the security, uh, security parameter. The final output for all of the parties are the generators of the two specific groups F and GQ from the framework. In the key generation, all the parties take the elements from the setup phase, and then they will choose a public key for the encryption scheme and the secret key, which is an element of GQ, computed as GQ to the power of SKI. And also they will obtain the public keys from the other players. Also, they have the additive shares its I of the signing key is from ECDSA. And also they will know the verification shares QK for, for the other players and Q as the verification key of the ECDSA protocol. The interactive signing procedure is more complicated, so we will explain it using an example with three players. The, all, each of them has its own shares of the secret key its, which is its I, and the secret key of the CL encryption scheme. The first thing players do is to choose randomly in ZQ two elements KI and gamma I. Then encrypt the KI with its own PKI, the public key, 
obtaining a subject test of ki and then compute a big gamma i as gamma i multiplied by p. After that, each of them commit to gamma i and then they broadcast the encryption of the ki and the commitment of the gamma i. And from now, all the players will know the encryption of the ki in particular. In phase two, we can call gamma the sum of the gamma i and k the sum of the ki. What the player wants to do is to compute k gamma and k h, which we can see as the additive shares ki gamma j and ki is j they have computed in the P2P protocols. As I said, for, it is the same idea of the general feather protocol where we want to mask the value of k. The, the next goal for the players is to convert this additive shares of k gamma and k h in additive shares that we call alpha, beta, mu and e. So we can describe how the P2P protocol works and we take, well, for example, the player P1 and player P2. Uh, they want to share the element gamma R1, K2 and K2 it's 1 as additive shares and the first thing is for P1 to compute two random values from ZQ which are Ni to 1 and beta to 1, compute a point of the elliptic cube which is be a need to one multiplied by p and taking the encrypted value k of k2 from p2 in the uh, taken from the previous phase and then using the linear the homomorphic operation of the encryption scheme he computes alpha to one and mu to one then he sends the, this encryption with the point b to one to player two and then player 2 can decrypt to recover its additive shares alpha to 1 and mu to 1 and do a check of the point e, point is e received. Uh, remember that as to alpha to 1 is computed as an exponentiation of an encryption multiplied by the encryption of a random value which is the opposite of the additive shares of p1. So if we had alpha to 1 and beta to 1 we obtain gamma 1 k2 the same thing for for mu and ni at the end of phase 2 after receiving uh, the alpha and betas mu and ni from the other players each of the players can compute delta i and sigma i which are the sum of that element alpha and beta plus ki gamma i for the case of delta i and for sigma i it is the sum of the mu and ni given and received in the p2p protocols uh, plus ki it's i then in phase 3 they can all broadcast the delta i values and in phase 4, phase four they commit to the big gamma i computed in the first phase from now all the players can compute big r as the inverse of the sum of delta i multiplied by the sum of that gam big gamma i and also compute the first component of r which is little r Finally, in phase 5, they can jointly compute S as the sum of the k's uh, multiplied by hm plus r multiplied by sigma i. Notice that here we have the sum of k and not the inverse of the k since we have used k to the power of minus 1 in the, in the, in the expression of r. So this is the inverse of the really k chosen. One main difference with the general feather protocol is that we use another encryption scheme which is CL which is not subjective instead of Payet so we need to prove that a subject test sent by the first player in the P2P protocol is a valid encryption and since we are working groups of unknown order proving this is really expensive but the advantages is that in phase 2 we don't have proof, range proof and also we do only efficient checks on the curve so we can introduce our second main contribution as i said we have a problem in proving that the cl subject tests are well formed so we we give an efficient protocol to prove this which relies on two computational assumptions that are not new from previous work in the setting of cl 
There is six solution for proving that a CL cipher test is well formed, but the type of challenge that a verifier can, can send is binary, and so the protocol has to be repeated more times. So the problem is that we have expensive zero-knowledge proof of knowledge that need to be repeated for each signature, and this is not reasonable. So our solution is to replace this statistical security of that protocol with a computational security, which relies of the two assumptions that I will introduce you, and then this is much more efficient. We are going now to see how to prove that a CEVEC test is well formed. A CL encryption of an element K is a couple of elements. The first, which is an element in GQ, which is GQ to the power of R, and the second is the public key to the power of R multiplied by F to the power of K, which has to be an element in G. But we have some difficulties, which are the first that we don't know what is the order of GQ. It is S, but it is a no that we, the elements of the direct product GQF, which is G, are not efficiently recognizable, and the verifier cannot check if the element is received come from G, and if C1 or C2 are not in G, we have an information leakage. So the consequence is that P has to prove that E knows the randomness R and the element encrypted K. So we improve our zero knowledge using a zero knowledge argument of knowledge, while the a previous solution, which binary challenge, was a zero knowledge proof of knowledge. The, the reason why is that we now use computational assumption to make the protocol more efficient, since we have to repeat it for each couple of players in all the P2P protocols. To extend the challenge set, we use one of our assumptions, which is the low order assumption, and that dimension depends on the parameter of that assumption. The resulting protocol is complete, is sound, and is, it is zero knowledge. The assumptions we use are the low order assumption, which tells us that it is hard to find a low order element in G, and the strong root assumption, which tells us that given an int, with some constraint, which, which, which is that it is different from all the powers of 2, since in the class group it's easy to compute square roots, it is difficult to find roots of that element. And you can see that it is similar to strong RSA. About the challenge space, we have that its dimension is relative to the low order assumption parameter, and also that eta, a malicious P, can extract RK or break at least one assumption. Furthermore, our protocol needs to be run once, thanks for that assumption. Finally, we are going to see the efficiency of our protocol, comparing it with the other two protocols from Lindelnoff and Gennaro Wolfeder. We see in the comparison that for low or level uh, of security, the protocols of Gennaro Wolfeder and Lindelnoff are faster than ours, in the keygen and sign protocols, while in terms of dimension we have an advantage in keygen and sign. For high level of security, we have a faster signing. In conclusion, we have seen that an instantiation from the CL framework using class groups give us a homomorphic scheme which can use the same order of the elliptic cube as order of the message space. It is practical and low bandwidth. Furthermore, we have improved the zero knowledge proof of knowledge, which is costly for a group of unknown order, using efficient trash, uh, argument of knowledge. And our future work are giving a, a threshold variant of the CL encryption scheme, prove simulation security for that full threshold protocol, use preprocessing to further improve efficiency, and apply the same techniques to the Lindelof protocol, since we have done this for the general feather.